Lord Jesus, your word is food and drink for us. Help us to feed upon you day by day, that we may have the strength to do your work. Welcome to my reflection this week, and I'm on the northern edge of Birmingham, standing next to the old Hampstead Bridge, which you can see behind me. In a cottage that stood somewhere near here, on the 20th or the 21st of August 1745, a boy was born who would shape the future of Christianity. Now the bridge you see behind me was built during his lifetime, but by that time he was already three and a half thousand miles away in what would become the eastern states of the United States of America. There he lived a life journeying, preaching the gospel. Our opening prayer, let us pray. Lord God, who journeys with us and does great things in our sight, protect us on our journey, that we may live for God and bring others to do so too. Amen. Francis Asprey, who was born near this spot, was the second child of Joseph and Elizabeth Asprey. He had an older sister, Sarah, who died aged just six years old, when Francis, or Frankie as he was known to the family, was only three or four. Sarah was buried just up the road at St Mary's Handsworth. While Frankie was still very young, he and his parents moved just a couple of miles upstream along the River Tame to here. This is the cottage where Francis Asprey grew up. It's now a small museum, open on special occasions or by prior arrangement with the local council, Sandwell, who own it. It's situated alongside the very busy Newton Road, which you may be able to hear, and we're on the border between West Bromwich and Great Bar. Now, initially, the family worshipped at St Margaret's Great Bar, and indeed, in the fullness of time, it's there that Joseph and Elizabeth Asprey were buried. But at some point, they started to worship a mile in the other direction at All Saints West Bromwich. The vicar there, Edward Stillingfleet, was very sympathetic to the Methodist cause, a movement led by John Wesley and others, a Church of England clergyman who travelled the country preaching the gospel. It's from this cottage, week by week, that the Asprey family, including the young Frankie, would have gone to listen to sermons at All Saints. Frankie dropped out of school at the age of 12, and he was then apprenticed as a blacksmith, locally, probably within a few yards of this cottage, but also some of the time appears to be spent at the forge at Forge Farm on Forge Lane, right here in West Bromwich. On Sundays, though, after worship at All Saints, Frankie and others would have journeyed to hear some of the popular local meetings of different preachers who were travelling the country. Included among those would have been John Wesley. Wesley, we know, preached on several occasions in West Bromwich, and indeed just a few miles up the road at Wensbury, he's known to have preached on at least 40 different occasions. Asprey's faith deepened during this time and we know that by the age of 16 he was praying and preaching himself at some of the open air meetings. John Wesley recognised that Frankie Asprey had a gift for this and he soon appointed him to lead the West Bromwich class meeting. A group of followers who gathered together regularly to pray, study the scriptures and serve God's people. Asprey soon became a local preacher, an unpaid role, preaching at places in the immediate vicinity. But then, just at the age of 20, John Wesley appointed Asprey as a full-time travelling preacher, initially to the Staffordshire circuit. And then, shortly afterwards, he also served in Bedfordshire, 
in Essex and then in Wiltshire. It was while Asprey was stationed on the Wiltshire circuit that he attended a meeting in Bristol where John Wesley had a question to ask. It was this. Our brethren in America call aloud for help. Who are willing to go over and help them? Asprey volunteered and it wasn't long before he set sail from the port of Pill on the Severn Estuary in the summer of 1771. He was understandably very uncertain as to what the future would hold, but there was to be no turning back. Indeed, Francis Asprey never returned to these shores. Our Gospel reading. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of the disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. In that Gospel we heard how some of Jesus' disciples turned back when they heard some of the challenging words that Jesus said. For Asprey, of course, in the middle of the Atlantic, there was no turning back, even when he had doubts. Asprey kept a journal through all of his life as a preacher. And on his journey across the Atlantic, in September 1771, he wrote these words. I will set down a few things that lie on my mind. Whither am I going? To the new world. What to do? To gain honour? No, if I know my own heart. To get money? No. I am going to live to God and bring others to do so. In the 45 years of ministry that followed, Asprey travelled on horseback around what would become the eastern states of the USA. He travelled at least and probably considerably in excess of 300,000 miles on horseback, preaching the gospel. He was the only British preacher to remain in the Americas during the Revolutionary War. After that war, John Wesley in England ordained Thomas Coke as superintendent for the American work, as he called it. Coke, when he reached the shores of America, later ordained Asprey within the space of a few days as deacon, elder or presbyter, and then as superintendent. 
Asprey later adopted the title Bishop, much against John Wesley's wishes. Thomas Coke returned to England, leaving Frankie Asprey at the age of just 39, holding the reins of American Methodism. Methodism under Asprey's influence grew rapidly in the United States of America, and the American brand of Episcopal Methodism traveled around the world complementing in many places Methodism from a more British origin. At the heart, though, of much of the development of Methodism within the United States was Francis Asprey, now regarded by some as a founding father of the United States. Frankie, the boy who grew up on the edge of the black country, a blacksmith, preacher and bishop. Let us pray. Holy God, you inspired Francis Asbury with zeal to proclaim the gospel. Inspire us, we pray, by your Holy Spirit, that we, like him, may be eager to share your good news and lead many to Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being part of this reflection today from here in historic West Bromwich. Not a phrase you might have expected to hear me say. Now, we've done these reflections every Sunday since Palm Sunday back in 2020. I'm going to have a break for a couple of weeks and I'm hoping to bring the next reflection on Sunday the 12th of September. Until then, take care, stay safe, and remember that the best of all, God is with us.